Hi, I'm John Stewart, Chief Investment Officer of Farmers Trust Company. This is The Investor's Edge. The Investor's Edge, Market Insights with John Stewart is brought to you by Farmers Trust Company. Hi, I'm John Stewart. Welcome to The Investor's Edge. First up, the week in review. Russia standoff keeps volatility elevated. So this Russia-Ukraine situation continues to dominate news headlines, and it's been driving market volatility as well in what was already a rocky start to 2022 for stocks. Now, I won't speculate on what Russia's intentions are regarding Ukraine one way or another, but the immediate result of all the consternation has been continued upward pressure on oil and gas prices. Now, guess who produces a significant amount of those resources? Case in point, the Russian stock index is already up 6.5% so far in February, versus a loss of roughly 2% for the S&P 500 index. One thing higher energy prices are likely to do is keep the Fed on track to tighten monetary policy by raising interest rates several times this year. Now, tighter liquidity conditions will likely cause indigestion for stocks, especially if the economy begins to slow in the coming months, which is something we're keeping a very close eye on. For this week's featured insight, don't chase performance. So many investors look at historical performance when attempting to select individual stocks or mutual funds. This makes sense given that with many things in life, we tend to estimate the future by looking at the past. Now, while momentum, that is buying investments that have been performing well recently, can actually persist longer than some people think, chasing strong performance can actually be quite dangerous. Most of the high-flying growth stocks of 2021 have actually been complete disasters so far in 2022. Mutual funds haven't been much different. If you decided to invest in the best-performing funds of last year, you've likely lost quite a bit of money during the first seven weeks of this year. Now, bottom feeding, which is trying to buy stocks that are down substantially and have performed poorly, can actually be equally as challenging of an approach. So what's an investor to do? Well, the best approach is just to buy high quality businesses with strong management teams and consistent sales and earnings growth. If you can buy those companies when they're down in price, it's all the better. Looking ahead, economic data to lead the market. So now that quarterly earnings season is wrapping up, economic data will take the baton in terms of leading markets for the next couple of months. Next week will actually involve a deluge of data for investors to analyze. Consumer confidence has been a weak spot for the economy, and we'll get another update on that. We'll also get some housing data, including the new home price index, as well as new home sales. Now, the biggest day for data will actually be next Friday when we'll get more inflation data, as well as personal income and consumer spending numbers. Strong numbers might actually worry investors by keeping the Fed in inflation fighting mode, while weaker numbers would call into question future earnings growth. Either way, more market volatility is likely. Once again, I'm John Stewart. Thank you for watching The Investor's Edge. The Investor's Edge, Market Insights with John Stewart is brought to you by Farmers Trust Company.